Tears in my eyes. Uh, that's the Holy Spirit working through, working through her fingers right there. I don't know. I don't know how Church of Christ does it. No, 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 no. You know, I think what happened is a long, long time ago, they had a horrible pianist at, at the Church of Christ. They said, "You know what? We're never going to do this again." So they're missing out. So who's ready for some good preaching out there? All right. Well, well me too. We'll see if God can use this broken small vessel uh, to give you guys some good preaching. I want to ask you guys a question. Do y'all think prayer is, can be patriotic? <laughs> Absolutely. We're going to talk about that today. So aren't y'all just tired of all the nonsense going on in the country? I'm just going to be blunt with y'all today. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of all of it. You know, I remember way back in the day, you know, my grandpa, he was going to take me to a baseball game my dad told me, make sure you take your hat off when you, when you stand up for the national anthem at that baseball game. Mm -hmm. I was like, well, of course I will. I'll do whatever football says. Football tells me to take the hat off. I am. Well, he said, no, you make sure you do it. Don't forget to take off your hat. Well, I found out that, if, that before I was born, football had gone to a baseball game, and the guy in front of him had refused to take off his hat and hearing the national anthem. And Papa slapped that hat off his head. <laughs> and so I'm not saying that we need to do that. I'm just saying, you know, where, where, where have we gone, guys? You know, what would my Papa would do if he'd see guys down there kneeling near the National Anthem? He'd be pretty upset. So I'm tired of it all. But guys, we need to get out there and vote. We do. We need to encourage other Christians to vote. So I was looking at several Bible verses, and I came across Romans 13. I believe this might be another, another sermon series, I don't know yet, but I want to start here in Romans 13, because Paul talks about uh, how Christians should treat their country, how we should treat our country, how we should treat our elected leaders. The Word of God states, let every soul be subject unto the high, higher powers, for there is no power but God, the powers that be ordained of God. Whosoever therefore resist the power, resist the ordinance of God, and they and that they resist shall receive themselves damnation. For the rulers are not a terror to good works, but to the evil. Will then thou not be afraid of power? Do which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the saint. For he is the minister of God unto thee for good. But if thou do not do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain, for he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. Wherever ye must be subject not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake, for this shall cause uh, pay ye tribute also, for they are God's ministers attending continually upon this very thing. Render therefore to all their dues tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to from whom honor. I have used the King James, but that's just a great version. Father God, let's go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and pray. Sorry. Father God, you guided me in preparation. I ask that you guide me in presentation. May I take the time to listen to you, Father God. I ask that the Holy Spirit come upon me help me with this message. Without you, I'm nothing. With you, Father God, I'm everything. I thank you so much for everything that you've done for, for me and this church family, for this nation, this, this great state that we live in. I ask for, for guidance and strength right now. In your name, amen. Amen. 
You know, I, I've made a lot of mistakes in my life. You know, I make so many mistakes that I, I probably could write a maybe a 24 part sermon series. Maybe, 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 maybe 48, maybe 48 part sermon series. You know, but one mistake I never made is I, I never lost my faith in Jesus. Second mistake was I never turned my back on my country. Amen. Never. You know, I think about all that's going on today and how many Americans are turning to evil. Mm -hmm. And sadly, it's, it's, it's most of our youth that's turned away from, from their country. They've turned away from God. In fact, they hate America. They hate America. And they're trying to destroy it. In some cases, they are. They think that anarchy is a reasonable replacement for some sort of government. It's not. They probably don't even know what, what it really is or understand what anarchy is. Some of them might kind of understand it. They know that, well, anarchy is an opportunity for me not to work and sit around and grow drugs and do drugs, spray paint a couple of buildings, but it's not going to work out. We're so blessed to live in this great country. That flag right there represents a great country under God. This is my country. This is your country. We're also blessed, if I might say, to live in the best state of the country, too. Like, I'm going to boast a little bit about Texas because we are, we are a wonderful state. You know, with the exception of Austin, Austin's kind of weird. <laughs> you know, we, uh, you, but we don't, but I say this because we hold strong. We hold strong compared to the rest of the country, or the rest of the cities. But for the most part, our, our nation's youth and young adults have been taught that solid Christian values are evil. And so are the people behind it. You know, there's even encouragement, if you watch some of the news, that by certain leaders and political parties, for people to revolt and basically burn down the country. In some cities, that's, that's literally a reality. There are lives of families that are that are being threatened. There's lives that are being torn apart. There's people that are being threatened because of the color of their skin. There's a racial war out there. There's a class war, class war, a war within our political parties. So this November is going to be a very important election. Probably one of the most important election in U.S. history, in my opinion. We Christians must get out there and vote. We must encourage other Christians to vote. We're going to vote for somebody that's going to stand behind our traditions and stand behind our values. Now, as a pastor, I can't directly tell you who to vote for. But it's my job and my duty to tell you to get out there and vote. The Word of God tells us to vote. Government is one of the three institutions ordained by the Almighty. I like using that word, the Almighty. The president used that word uh, a few weeks back. Ordained by the Almighty, the others being family and church. Verse 1 in today's text states, I'll leave it up there. It states, let every subject, every soul be subject unto the higher powers. Those who have been justified by faith are obligated, us were obligated, to be subject to human government. Actually, the obligation applies to everyone, but the Apostle Paul was especially concerned with us, believers. So God established a human government after the flood when he decreed, when he decreed um, whoever sheds man's blood, by man's blood shall be shed, for in the image of God he made man. This decree way back in Genesis gave authority to men to judge criminal matters and to punish offenders. So church, in every ordered society, in every civilized ordered society, there must be authority and there must be submission to that authority. Otherwise, you have a state of anarchy. That's what, that's what it would have been. If God, if God would not have established a government way back in Genesis, way back in the Old Testament, we would just be living in the state of anarchy. So, some lost souls, they want anarchy in some, some of our parts of our cities, but they don't understand or realize that we can't survive politically and, and, and physically 
We can't survive in a government of anarchy, not indefinitely. So what did God do? I'm glad you asked. God has instituted human government. And no government exists apart from God's will. Now, this doesn't mean that God approves of everything that uh, all human rulers and leaders do, because a lot of them do a lot of bad things. He doesn't, God doesn't approve of corruption. He doesn't approve of brutality. He doesn't approve of leaders allowing brutality. He doesn't approve of tyranny. God doesn't certainly, he doesn't approve of evil organizations like Black Lives Matter, nor does he support BLM supporters beating up elderly Trump supporters. God's not happy with rioters. He's not happy with radicals on both sides, if I might say. He's not happy with looters stealing sneakers out of the store, stealing the flat screens TVs out of the store. I was saying in Bible studies, you know, it would be different if, if, if I saw people looting for food, if they're hungry. I'm not saying it would be right, but then I would say, well, maybe there's something that is going wrong in our nation where people need bread. I hear about stories, my grandmother came from Germany when they hardly had any bread, but they still didn't loot. They actually still didn't loot. They just, they just sat there and starved. She was before before the war. They had they had they had rations, and then during the war. But she never. They never got to the point where they turned against their country, even though some of us might have felt like they should have. But God's not happy with any of this. Verse one also says, "There is no power but God, but of God. The powers that be that be that that be are ordained by God. Therefore, whether we li whether we like the government or not." All government is established by God and it serves his purpose. We subject ourselves to government authorities because they are appointed by God and serve a purpose in his plan. Babe, can you give me some water from the back? Sorry. I don't know if I can make it, make it three more pages. Um, believers can live victoriously. We can live victoriously as Christians in a democracy. We can live victoriously uh, in a monarchy. We can live victoriously in a totalitarian government. But no earthly reign, church, no earthly government is more corrupt than the men who compromise it. The only ideal government, there's only one ideal government, by the way, and that is the government of Jesus Christ, the benevolent monarchy of the Lord Jesus. But church, it's good to remember, it's good to remember when Paul wrote Romans, okay? We have to remember when Paul wrote Romans, what was going on. Paul wrote Romans in one of the most darkest times of Christian history. Nero, Nero was a ruler. Thank you, baby. Uh, Nero was a ruler. And if you don't know who Nero, who Nero was, Nero is, Nero was the biggest persecutor of Christians. We're talking being fed to the lions, uh, tortured in all kinds of ways. I even read, I was reading all the horrible things, and I'm not gonna, I'm not going to sensationalize them up here, but that's some of them. I think even hot tar were thrown on Christians. That's just absolutely horrible. So those are very dark days for Paul and Christians when he wrote this. And so Romans was very, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was it was kind of hard for me to let this sink in and understand it. So I had to understand what was going on in the background uh, to relate and say, because when I first read it, I said, well, well, well maybe, maybe I can revolt against the government if I don't like it. Maybe that's okay. You know, say if someone gets elected in there that I don't like, we can, we can pull some Maccabee type stuff and we can rise against the government, but we can't, no matter what we want to. But it still holds true that anyone who rebels against the government is disobeying and rebelling against God, against what God has ordained. Verse 2 states, Whoever so therefore resists the power, resists the ordinance of God, and that they resist shall receive themselves damnation. Damnation. So whoever resists lawful authority earns and deserves punishment. Therefore, Christians must obey the law of the land. We must obey the law of the land. There's exceptions, of course. Don't get me wrong. There's an exception, of course. We uh, Christians were not required to obey the government 
If the government orders us, orders us to sin or to compromise our loyalty to Jesus, no government has a right to command a person's conscience, by the way. There are times when Christians must obey God. We must obey God, but then incur a wrath from man. So like Paul's idea, though, church, Paul's idea is that you and I be the best citizens of our country. And we don't have a country that's like Nero yet. <laughs> yet, we don't, have, we don't have one. So people just need to stop their moaning and complaining. It's a great country we live in. So even though we are loyal to God, we are also loyal to the state. We believers are good citizens. This is because, why? We're Christians. Who are we supposed to be? We're supposed to be honest. And most of us are. We're supposed to not give trouble. Most of us don't. We're supposed to pay our taxes, which the verse says. And most importantly, we pray for state and rulers. We pray for our president. No matter who he is, we pray for our president. Don't underestimate church. I don't want y'all to ever underestimate the power of prayer for our nation. It's very powerful. I want to show y'all a quote up here. We talked about prayer being a political or patriotic action. So it says, prayer is a political action. Prayer is a social energy. Prayer is public good. Prayer is an act of patriotism in its largest sense of the word. The single most important action contributing to whatever health and strength there is in our land is prayer. Paul describes human government officials as God's ministers. We've talked about that before, as God, God's ministers. It's, it's the same word as deacon, it's diakonos. Uh, but it has several meanings, whether it be a, uh, a minister here in the church, it be a, a servant deacon. But it all boils down to one thing, is that servants, they are servants. Specifically, the Greek lexicon defines today's text as those who carries on his God, or care, who, care, who God carries on his administration on earth as magistrates. The ruler, whether president, governor, mayor, or judge, is a minister of God. Remember, a minister is a servant of the Lord. Even if they don't know God personally, they're still the Lord's official. So we pray for them. Christians, we're supposed to show respect to the, for the government. So the last two verses in today's text are, are very funny, in a sense. So the last two verses say, for because this you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to do this very thing. Render therefore all their due taxes to whom all taxes are due, customs to whom all customs are due, fear to whom fear, honor to honor. I don't think anybody I've ever met in my life, you don't mean your life, has ever said, you know what, my favorite two verses in the Bible are, are Romans 6 and 7, the, one about, the one's about paying taxes. Those are my favorite verses. You'll never see them in there, but they're in there. It, it's there. So I mean, the Word of God says Christians are supposed to pay their taxes. So we do what the Word of God says. There it is, folks. Christians were show, supposed to show respect for our government. We pay our taxes. We fulfill our duties and responsibilities as citizens. We owe our government not only our obedience, but our financial support for paying taxes. It's an advantage, church. It is an advantage to live in a society of law and order. It is an advantage to have a police department. It is an advantage to have an EMS service. These are blessings. What are you gonna do without them? You're gonna, you're gonna give the gun to Joe Blow next door and say, here, go ahead and take care of me. Are you going to say, here, take care of my, my sick aunt with your, with your truck? We don't have an ambulance anymore. Carry her away in a, in a pickup truck. I mean, come on now. So we must be willing to bear the cost to support our first responders. They're two servants of God. 
They're ministers of God. We pay for our, we pay our taxes to pay for these services, but we don't not only pay for to pay taxes. We support them in other ways. We support them emotionally. We support them spiritually. Not to mention that they are given their time and talents by carrying out God's will. We're also talking about the president. The president is giving his time and talents to work for us. And he's in his, what, mid-70s now? It's not an easy job. It's not an easy job. And so our first responders, our presidents, our leaders, they're giving their time and talents to carry out God's will for a stable society. Not to mention that our first responders are risking our lives for us. So they're entitled to some support. The fact that we believers are citizens of heaven does not exempt us from our responsibility to the government. We must demonstrate respectful fear for those who are in charge for enforcing the law. We must show honor to the names of officials of civil servants. Even if we don't like them, that's a hard one for me to do because I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like all, the, all of our, our elected leaders, but we still got to show respect for them. That's a hard one. But this is what God says, and this is what we should do. They're in that position because God allowed that them to be in that position. So we need to pray for them. We need to lift them up. So finally, finally, this is a really important one. And I don't see this here in our church, but we see this, we see this especially in the news. We see this throughout our nation. People speaking bad about our president. Christians don't speak bad about the president. Even if you didn't vote for that president, you do not speak bad about the president. We shouldn't speak bad about anybody, by the way. But we don't speak derogatory of our president. No matter what, even in the heat of political campaign, we should never join in the verbal abuse of the head of state. It is as written in Acts 23, 5, you should not speak evil of the ruler of your people. So as I close today's message, church, we are commanded to pray for our leaders. According to 1 Timothy, which I didn't put up there, but I'm going to read it for you. Listen to 1 Timothy. First of all, then I urge that supplications, prayers, intercessions, and thanksgiving be made for all the people, for kings and all who are in high positions, that we may lead a peaceful and quiet life, godly and dignified in every way. This is good. And it's pleasing in the sight of God, our Savior, who desires all people to be saved and to come to the knowledge of truth. We should vote for a candidate church who takes a biblical stand on issues. We should vote for a candidate that supports the beliefs that we have. My brother Bob was telling me an interesting story back there in Bible study. That's why I say y'all got to come to Bible study so you get to talk. Uh, but... I don't know what, I just don't know if it really goes to the sermon, but he said back in the pioneer days, uh, what the, the, the pastors would, would, would give the, the congregation the information on, on, the, on the presidents or who to vote for. I think that's just, that's pretty funny. Can y'all imagine that? I come and say, all right, well, let's talk about President Trump here. We're here. We got President Trump. We got Joe Biden over here. Oh my gosh, that'd be, that'd be pretty funny. But um, so pick a candidate that's saved by Jesus. I think the president's saved, by the way. If none of the candidates are saved, then vote for a candidate with good and moral character and pray for them to be saved. Remember we talked about, y'all remember we talked about Emperor, Nero, Emperor uh, Nero earlier? You know, some of those early brothers and sisters, they prayed for the very government that was murdering them. Can y'all believe that? They prayed for the very government that was murdering and torturing their own people. I don't know what to say to that. But that's what they did. Right now in this great country, right now in this great country, we are far from those Nero days. We're very far from it. But we could be on our way to similar days. As Americans, we enjoy, we enjoy more freedom on earth than any other people. And that's a fact. That is a fact. So how can we fail? How can we fail 
to pray for our president, Donald Trump, and the rest of our nation's leaders. Let's not fail that. Let's continue to pray for our president. Let's continue to pray for this great nation. Let's continue to pray for each other. Let's continue to pray for this community. And let's stick together. And get out there and vote in November. Don't forget to do that. I think this will be a sermon series. Maybe we'll, we'll, stick, we'll stick it all the way to November. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see where God takes, takes us on it, okay? We'll do it together. Uh, so let us pray. Father God, we come to you in your holy and righteous name. We thank you so much for the country we live in, the city we live in. We thank you for the community of Ingleside, Texas, and San Patricio County. Couldn't ask for a better place to live. Couldn't ask for a better life. Pray for this congregation that we continue to walk the way that you want us to walk, that we lead others to Jesus Christ, and that we, we grow the church, uh, not necessarily numerically, but we grow the church spiritually. May we see each other spiritually grow, and that we, we become better servants, because we're all servants of you, Lord. Let us become better servants of our community, better servants of our church, better servants of our family, and better servants of our nation. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I dare not end a sermon without offering a lifeline. If you don't know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, make a profession of faith today because tomorrow is not promised. Only death is. And like I said before, I don't think hell's a... <laughs> hell's not like a place with no air conditioning, like a bad hotel room. No, it's a place that's on fire. It's a place you don't want to go. So, Andy, up on that today. You can make a profession of faith on this feed, too, right here, if you want to come up and... and, and uh, Make a profession of faith, because tomorrow's not promised. If you're looking for a church to join, join our church. You can talk to me or one of my, one of our church leaders here uh, about the church. We'd love to have you and your family. Uh, if you need prayer right now, please come up during this time or during our invitational hymn. And let us pray with you. Let us pray over you. And folks, you can send in the prayers on the feed, too. I'll be there in just a second. So if anyone's got any prayer concerns here in this room, please come up. Let us pray over you, and we do. Thank you. Let's stand together, page nine, uh, 593. <laughs> Let's pray for these folks on the, on the feed real quick, and then we'll, we'll release you guys. Uh, Father God, continue to lift up uh, the fire department right now. The fire department needs your prayers. Uh, lift up those that are involved in the hurricane. Uh, be with the families and the people working to, to respond to it and help in these communities, help them to grow one another uh, spiritually too as well. Father God, be with the uh, Guzman family uh, right now uh, who's had loss. Be with Paul and Veronica Reed who also had a loss, be with uh, Javier uh, Vera and his family, be with uh, Sally Lynchberger family, uh, Pat Martinez. Uh, please continue to pray for all the troops overseas. Yeah, that's a good one. Thank you, Yvonne. Uh, lift up our troops. Uh, we, they are a, a, a great blessing to this nation. Father God, uh, please pray for the Rose Morris family. Lift up the Rose Morris family and whatever they need. Father God, be with Sister Yvonne. Uh, she's feeling better, so praises to you, Lord Jesus. For Sister Vaughn being, being feeling better, continue to lift up the, the Jones family and Sister Rosa. Uh, we love you very much, Sister Rosa. Thank you for joining us. Lift her up. Help her to heal, Father God. And uh, we'd love to see her back here in person one day uh, soon. But continue to help her heal. And whenever the time is right, she'll, 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 she'll be here. I know she will. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Um,